what is Signet and how are you involved? The Signet study is an epidemiologic study. And so basically what the tools of epidemiology allow us to do is it allows us to look at uh, important sort of health-related questions in human populations, for example, our Signet study girls, uh, actually becoming young women now, not so much girls anymore, uh, and really studying people in their natural environment. So the Signet study is a study basically looking at why some girls mature sexually earlier than other girls. And so that's really what it's about. And we're looking at a broad constellation of factors. We're looking at environmental factors. That's sort of the main focus, but we're looking at nutrition and physical activity and psychosocial factors and sort of larger societal factors. Uh, and my role in this study is I'm the principal investigator. And what that means is basically I'm overall responsible for running the study and the financial aspects of it and making certain things happen and that type of thing. What components of the data collected in Signet do you use for your research? So my primary interest uh, has been on nutrition and physical activity and sort of lifestyle choices that people uh, engage in. And so my primary interest is in looking at these dietary factors and physical activity patterns and obesity and, and that type of thing. Uh, so uh, I, I should say that one of the great, another great thing about the Signet study is that it's really an interdisciplinary sort of research program. All the researchers you know, really complement each other, not just within our study, but as you know, we're also a partnership with studies in Cincinnati and in New York. So looking at people who are kind of like my counterparts in those studies, the study in New York is run by someone who's really an environmental science, scientist. Her name is Mary Wolf, uh, sort of a toxicology and environmental factors background. My background is really in nutrition and epidemiology. And the person who leads the study in Cincinnati, he's a pediatrician, you know. And so, so we, we, the three of us complement each other. And then within the Signet study team, we have an adolescent health psychologist, a pediatrician who focuses, whose specialty is on hormonal uh, sort of factors in, in pediatrics. Uh, we have a, a physician epidemiologist. Uh, uh, we have uh, people who are involved in molecular epidemiology, so, so really looking at, you know, sort of DNA and molecular aspects. Uh, so, so we have a great sort of multidisciplinary team. Plus, we were working closely with uh, the Zero Breast Cancer Group, you know, who helps to keep us, you know, sort of relevant to the world. And then we're walking, working closely with all of you, you know, as study participants. So it's like this great sort of multiple perspectives, you know, that really helps to inform what we're doing and how we're doing it. And so my sort of close to my heart interest is the nutrition and physical activity piece. Obesity rates have almost tripled among youth over the past 30 years with one in three children in the U.S. considered overweight or obese. Regular physical activity should amount to about an hour a day for children ages six to 17. Studies have shown that a girl who is obese is more likely to begin puberty at an earlier age. Healthy eating should emphasize fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and choose foods that are low in animal fats, salts, and added sugar. Eating healthy and being active can help maintain a healthy weight and body fat level and may help reduce the risk of breast cancer later in life. <laughs> What is Signet? Signet is a long-term or longitudinal study of the same group of 444 girls studying how they, their pubertal development occurs over the course of now eight years. So all the girls were from Kaiser Permanente in San Francisco, San Rafael, or Oakland. And the study's main outcome is to work out what may be causing, is puberty occurring earlier? And what may be causing earlier pubertal development? What is your job on the Signet study? I'm a pediatric endocrinologist. So that means I take care of children and teenagers with growth or hormone problems, such as issues with going through puberty too early or too late or having diabetes or other hormone problems. And my job on the Signet study has been um, to 
contribute the clinical side of someone who works with girls and to help arrange the training and make sure that the way that we're doing the tanner, the pubertal staging is going well, and to be that liaison to the pediatrics community. How do hormones affect development? Hormones are like the gasoline or the engine for development. And there are lots of hormones. There are hormones that control how tall you grow. There are hormones that control your energy level. And there are hormones which also ch cause pubertal development. So in girls, there's a set of hormones that cause breast development and a different set of hormones that cause pubic hair development. But they sort of work together and they sometimes have the same trigger. Sometimes they start at different times, and they all work together to end up with a, a totally healthy, normal adult female. Has the Cygnet study provided any new insights as to how hormones affect development? I don't know if the Cygnet study has provided insight into how hormones affect development, but it certainly has provided a wealth of information on what's really happening. So even hormone specialists or puberty specialists like me, I see one girl at a time. And even people like me didn't know what was really happening in the larger community. And when our study came out with the other two sites, because we work with Ohio and New York City, we had data on 1,200 girls. And we were able to show that, yes, puberty really is starting earlier. And that study, when it was published in 2010, made huge, huge um, impact on pediatrics care. And it, it really made a big difference to both pediatricians and pediatric hormone specialists like myself to, to sort of understand what the new normal is and what's happening. And now the next step is then to say, well, what's causing all these hormonal changes to start earlier and what can we do to prevent those? Female puberty is the process of developing from a girl to a woman. This includes the growth of breasts and hips. Additionally, you start having your periods, which allows you to have babies. Since the 1900s, girls in the Western societies have been going through puberty at a much earlier age. This is caused by a change in dietary habits, like eating more fast food that is high in calories and a lack of everyday physical activity, such as walking. Some chemicals can trigger false or changes during puberty, like early onset, that may lead to breast cancer later in life. These chemicals can disrupt the hormonal system and produce negative effects on organisms. What is your job on the Cygnus study? Well, I'm an epidemiologist at the California Department of Public Health, and my area of interest or research is environmental exposures. So that's the main focus for me on this study. And we're looking at a number of environmental exposures. Uh, we're measuring them in the urine you guys give us, <laughs> and blood, and asking questions. What are some, some products that cause damage? Well, it's hard to say for sure that they cause damage. That's some of the things we're looking at, but they're certainly of concern. And the main chemicals we're looking at are chemicals that might affect our natural hormones. Either they might block it or they might mimic it, thereby changing the process that's natural. So those are the ones we're concerned about the most. And one of the things we're also looking at is tobacco smoke exposure, and that we know is definitely uh, causes damage. But some of the ones we're looking at are things in soaps or in shampoos. You know, you could be on the lookout for them and try to avoid those products with phthalates. And some of the others are just in the food. It's a little harder to, to avoid. A lot of them are around. But it's a good thing to try to use more natural cleaners. What is a good way to find safe chemical products? Well, there's a lot of information on the Internet. I don't have a list of the websites with me, but that's a, a good place. And uh, you can also look at the products themselves. You know, they have to list the ingredients. So you could look for phthalates, you could look for triclosan, and try to avoid those kind of products. You could also make your own cleaning products with vinegar and lemon. You can find recipes for that online. And actually, your Signet newsletter is a good source because one of our upcoming issues is going to have the list of websites and some tips to avoid uh, different exposures. So look for that. BPA is a chemical in items made from plastic and can get into your body by eating it, touching it, and drinking it. Exposure to BPA can be reduced by not buying plastic containers with the number seven in the recycling triangle. Don't put plastic containers in the dishwasher because the heat can increase the risk of BPA coming out of the product. Try to buy glass, porcelain, or ceramic 
or stainless steel containers for food or liquid, an easy way is to microwave food in glass containers. If you can also eat fresh or frozen foods, not out of a can whenever you can. Uh, what is your job on the Signet study? My job, well, I'm trained as an adolescent clinical psychologist. So I came into this study to give advice to the investigators about how early life factors, particularly those in the family and um, in regards to like girls' emotional and behavioral health, might influence their pubertal transition and then lead to better or worse kind of outcomes. Do you think or are the facts showing there is a correlation between stress during adolescence and developing chronic diseases like cancer? That is a really good question. And it's a very, very hard question to answer because I'm sure that you can imagine um, how difficult it would be to study stressors in early life and see how they then influenced long-term trajectories over time. So Signet is, is a really interesting study in that we're, we're we followed girls now for eight, nine years. And uh, to the extent that you led us, we may continue that uh, into young adulthood and, and even further on. But you can imagine that over time, it's really hard to keep individuals in these long-term studies, right? So we don't have good data that shows whether early stressors lead to adult disease um, that happened where, where things were measured in real time. What we tend to do is we ask adults, what happened in your childhood? Was your childhood stressful? And, uh, and various kinds of stressors is what we ask about. Those studies show that uh, early life stress does get under the skin somehow and does put people at risk for, for at higher risk for disease later in life. Um, but we haven't had the chance to follow those people over time in real time. So while we have a suspicion that that's probably the case, and there's a lot of good evidence to back it up, um, some studies that are coming online will really be able to help us figure that out more clearly. And actually more important than, than the risk, what protects people? Like if you're exposed to major, major stressors in early life, why do some people do really well? And, and once we know that, then maybe we can um, help promote those kinds of things, those more positive factors. So it's, it's a good idea not to just focus on the risk, right? Phthalates are chemicals found in everyday products used for cleaning and hygiene, packaging, toys, and foods. Choose alternatives such as cloth, porcelain, ceramics, metal, glass, and fragrance-free products. Phthalates can be transferred from plastic packaging to the products they contain before being transferred to your body. To avoid phthalates, do not buy products labeled with number three plastics. What's your job on the Signet study? I'm the uh, director of a coordinating center that puts all the studies together. So my role has changed slightly. I'm a researcher uh, in the study, but also a, an overall director. How does neighborhood crime affect health, regardless of socioeconomic status? Well, it's an open question. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, belief and understanding that uh, neighborhood crime certainly has an impact on how people behave, but it's, I think, an ongoing area for research. One of the things that um, we think happens is when crime's around, it makes you, um, it's, it increases the level of stress in your environment. And we think that stress has an impact on hormones and and, and chemicals like Dr. Greenspan studies. Uh, so we uh, want to understand what the pathway is from an environmental condition that causes stress hormones to increase in the body that then have bad effects on heart disease and other, other conditions. Now, um, there's a condition, for instance, called hypervigilance that you can understand. If, if crime's happening in, in your neighborhood, you're looking for problems. You're sort of hyper aware of it. When you walk down the sidewalk, you're worried about who you're going to encounter or what's happening around the corner. That all increases your stress level. Uh, and, and those hormones can have uh, longer term impacts on, on health. Um, that's a simple sort of explanation. It gets much more complicated, but you get the idea. Spread the word. 
Help your community by telling people you know that some products contain dangerous chemicals that can change how hormones work in your body. Teach people why, is, why it is important to use products without these chemicals. Help the community learn about how exposure to chemicals in the environment can affect your health ex and explain why we need to learn more from researchers and spread awareness about what we can do to prevent exposure. Even though you can't always see what's going on in your body, bad choices can still affect you. Talk to health professionals to learn where to start making healthy choices, like how much exercise you should get and how to make healthier food choices. The Signet study and the two companion studies in Cincinnati and New York are certainly one of the pioneer studies in, in this area. We are the first ones that are explicitly looking at many of these environmental factors. Uh, and so, so there are other studies now that have been recently funded that are looking at some of the same questions, but we're the first ones. Uh, so we're really pioneers in that way. All of you are pioneers. So. One of the main things I really like to say is I want to say thanks to all of you, both as part of the Youth Advisory Board, but also as uh, participants in the Signet study. And not just you, but your families, you know, who have allowed you to participate in the study and in these activities. This study is really unique in the way that we've interacted with our participants. And we, I really feel like you're all partners in this big adventure. And, uh, and so I really want to thank all of you. Thank <laughs> you.